ladies and gentlemen, Andy Merrill. You know him as Brock. What? <laughs> Brock. The short A. Brack. There. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm British. And also Dana Snyder. Playing many, many, many of characters. I play Brock. Yes. I play Brock. Yeah, Brick. Like Could the can, like the peppermint. Oh. Uh, there's your Luigi. You may re you, said, you don't you weren't sorry. at the show, Lisa, but oh, what it, show did he's I an engineering physics major, oh. right? What's your name again? Isaac of Schwartz. Isaac of Schwartz. Isaac of Schwartz. And um, if he passes still using you, that joke. If he passes you in Mario Kart, you know what he says? What? Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he's Luigi. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've never seen him before in my life. Here I go. Yeah, I forgot. I'm you just going to talk like a wee Luigi. I took some video. I'll show you. Oh, okay, Let good. me answer that the question. <laughs> well, a forest of hands with questions. Uh, Woo! I don't, I'm like punch drunk now. But by day three at the convention, I feel like I feel like exhausted, but also restless. Like I'm, every, every, I'm fragile emotionally, everything's in a, I don't know how I feel. I feel like jittery from just screaming at a table all day. Oh yeah. I think I drank about 18 buckets worth of tequila. You did. Uh, Last night. Did I, you do more after we left, or did we? Oh, go? no. Oh. I well. said do more. Did you drink oh. more? Oh, 100%. Oh, at the place. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. As the moderator of this panel, I will confirm. <laughs> <laughs> we should have stayed. Speaking of which, we we absolutely can do a Q and A. If you have Qs, they may have As. I got As all day. Oh, uh, also it doesn't have to be about Adult Swim. We're very good at relationship advice, personal yeah. advice, like financial advice, all that stuff. Yeah, they're life there, coaches. No, you know, you may go to the whatever the Ruby panel and they want to only talk about Ruby because they just they're too focused. We're we're like Renaissance people up here. We're, this is Thomas Jefferson's yeah. minus the slave <laughs> owner stuff. <laughs> Yikes. It's a one-stop shop right yeah. now. Uh, 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 <laughs> I, I was going to ask if anybody was familiar with the Brack show. The, oh, three people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the this Brock a, show. They show how the they day, used to make this, the candies. This Brock is the <laughs> day of giving up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I brought three hams. I was going to give a ham to each person that asked an adult swim question that I haven't heard, but uh, there's oh, not very many people minute. in here. So. Bear in mind. <laughs> we might just open I tried the chair. To, I, he was, I, there's rules to that. Uh, yeah, none, of this, so. the, none of this, like, just something out of left field, like, you know, not about adult swim. Yeah. You can't just say, like, how many gallons does my pool hold? Like, well, I never heard that, but I never, no one cares. So you can't get trickeration about it. You know, you gotta be, it's gotta be a straightforward, actual question. We have a microphone here, although it, it doesn't look inviting because you, the camera's there as well. I don't know if we, can we move this mic? Can the light, can oh. the, can Not the, only did they, then they can, shined a light on her to can, shame her can more. These, what can these, oh, no. I'm just trying oh, to take a picture. Have, I feel Follow bad. Follow her. Can these blinding demon lights be like, yeah, you leave it because she bit. moved, so yeah. we're good. Can we Jesus. turn the Thanks stage moving, lights down a little bit? It sounds like I'm in a freaking you know, it's baseball like, Oh, that's stadium. great. That's so much better. <laughs> now look how so inviting it is. Still nobody. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> now wait a minute. Huh? I Here's feel like, somebody. I feel like Lou Gehrig in here with the echo. All right, just to get things started oh. uh, for both y'all, what's the fa what's y'all's most favorite character that y'all've had to play and y'all's least favorite so far? Favorite and least favorite? Is that what you said? Yeah. Favorite and least favorite. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, I would always be. I have to say, Master Shake. As my Woo! favorite, because that's the, I, I would never have done anything else had it not been for that. So, like, you know, it's, the, it's my original, my OG character that has afforded me to do other characters. And I'm still doing it. There's, like, a whole new season of Aqua Teen coming out. Like, maybe at the end of the year. I don't know. But it's great. It's great. There's got great people in it. Some there are. There is one episode with truly a superstar. I mean, superstar. 
unbelievable. How, how they did it, I have no clue how they talked him into doing it or why he did it. <laughs> and I can't say who because I don't want to get in trouble. Corey Feldman? Corey Feldman, oh, that's right. I wish. <laughs> as soon as they heard white hot <laughs> superstar, <laughs> you can't get any Andy that knew. Thing. You can't get any white hotter than that. Is Vishal still at Adult Swim? I don't think so. Because they could have had the whole Michael Jackson. Oh, Michael Jackson, yeah. Fun time together. Yes. <laughs> Talk about it. Uh, our old producer at Adult Swim, Vishal Roney, w was and probably still is the vice president or the treasurer of the international Michael Jackson fan club, like the number one with the craziest people in it. And he used to come in and give notes to Dave and Matt Malero for when they were doing what Aqua Teen, and Matt one time said, hey, watch this. And Vishal came in, like, kind of mad, giving notes about, I can't believe you put a dick on that thing, and whatever, you know, whatever the note was. <laughs> and Matt, on his guitar, just starts playing this. Now, I'll, I'll play it once, but then we're going to act it out. You'll do the music part, the guitar, and then I'll take over the role of Vishal. Oh, well, he's got... Oh, yeah, okay. There you go. I don't know if I can play it. No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to put you on the spot, but <laughs> Vishal would come in and Matt would start just going. Right? No. Guys, I kind of got these notes. I can't believe you didn't do it. Uh, I'll see you later, guys. Oh, you got to keep doing it. You gotta, it would like it would like put him into a trance. And then he would just leave. And then he'd come back like five minutes later and like, you shits, I was trying to tell you, you gotta get this thing. Like, totally <laughs> hypnotized. <laughs> <laughs> and started doing Billie Jean. Yeah. Fun, fun fact, Vishal Roney, you know what club he was part of before Michael Jackson? Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. Huh? Huh? He was a, a real member, like in the show for the new Mickey Mouse Club. Oh. Like he was a mouseketeer. Oh. With Justin... Right. Timberlake, uh, Brittany. Timberlake and, Brittany, and Britney Spears. And, uh, Christina, Christina Aguilera, I was right? say Debbie Vergaris or whatever you just <laughs> Except said. I feel like there was a... <laughs> Christina Aguilera. He was definitely, he definitely was in it, but like... It was Christina at least. But there was like, wasn't it like there was like the core people who were doing all the singing and dancing and then just some who sort of stood next to him and like, hey, <laughs> filling out the stage around Roy. Them. Oh, yeah. He that was like, Roy. That yeah, right. Been, yeah. Roy. Like, how the hell is that guy in the... That's, uh, that's for all the young kids in Roy here, Disney, the Roy yeah. joke. Uh, you, did you... Have you ever visited Michael Jackson's grave over there? You live in Los Angeles. Nope. Oh, it's Wait. right right there in Glendale, that, that big... Uh, Mausoleum. Hollywood Forever? The, the, Not what Hollywood is it? Forest Forever. Lawn. No, it's a Forest Lawn. Forest Lawn Cemetery. I've been there. Oh, yeah. Go to the Michael Jackson area. I didn't go area, to the Michael Jackson. Because then you see all the no, crazies. No, you know what? The, the, glor yeah. the glorious... People crying. Yeah. The amazing for various sparkly reasons. Gloves. Some of them spitting on his grave yeah. and crying, and others grave. crying. The amazing grave, Ronnie James Dio. Oh, Wait, he's that? got he's got <laughs> like a, a you know the velvet painting of the Spanish children with the teardrop eyes. Oh, yeah. That's on his grave. Whoa, that's pretty good. Pa painted in in concrete. Were we talking about this before? About there are certain people who have great celebrities who have great gravestones, like that. The Mel Blanks, who did Bugs Bunny, his just says that's all, folks, which that's is great. Perfect. You know, Lou, Lou Rawls. You what? know what his says? Yeah, buddy. Does it really? Say <laughs> yes. That? Wow. I know Rodney Dangerfield says. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> really? Yeah. And he's buried like, he's buried like right next to like Marilyn Monroe or one of those. <laughs> like he's, he's in a Beverly Hills cemetery that like there's every other grave is somebody super famous. Wow. Like Johnny Carson and all those guys. It's like the rich people yeah, cemetery. Oh yeah. And somehow Rodney Dangerfield. So to answer your question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sir. <laughs> well, you said to get the ball rolling, and that certainly got it rolling. Who knew it would go there? Thank you. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Dead celebrities. He likes Master Shake. I like Brack. They're the most like <laughs> the both of us, I think, that, that we do. Brock's my favorite. Brock is? Yeah, I like him, too. <laughs> Brock uh, was better than Brack, in a way, because... <laughs> 
uh, it's just, his name was so much better. Brock's trailer just came out for the new... The new Brock movie? Uh, yeah, the Venture Brothers movie. Brock. It's Brock, yeah. Brock. Like, oh, that Brock? Brock. Not, yeah, Brock. Not Brock. No, no Brock. Not, it's, it's Brack, okay? Not Lisa I'm an Brock. idiot. <laughs> Brock, the action Brack. I'm coming for you, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll pitch that and get it rejected by Adult Swim. So. Yep. For people. What's new? Just thank you for joining us just now. We're doing an Adult Swim panel. We have an open microphone. If you had a question, you were coming here to ask because. Hold on, I got two more celebrity graves. Oh, hang on. Jack, uh, Jack <laughs> Lemon's grave, right? <laughs> America treasure actor sure. Jack Lemon. His just says Jack Lemon in. <laughs> ah, nice. I, I love that last yeah. like a final. Joke. And Merv Griffin's uh, famous weirdo Merv Griffin says Merv Griffin will not be right back after these messages. <laughs> nice. See, that's, good. that's a missed these opportunity. It just ha should have the words to the Jeopardy song yeah. <laughs> written out. So it's just to say do 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 That might be on the back. <laughs> it <Not sure>, could be. <laughs> All right, yeah, sorry. With arrow to look around the back. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Give oh. that man a ham. <laughs> <laughs> Love the three ham joke. It killed. Um, what? Speaking of having ideas rejected by Adult Swim, what are some of your favorite ideas that didn't make it? I had this great idea where just they'd give me like a million dollars every week <laughs> for nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was an idea. Didn't happen. So, uh, <laughs> Lazo was still in charge. M Lazo is Mike Lazo, the guy who was the head of Adult Swim from before it was Adult Swim to a couple years ago. It was coming upon the 25th anniversary of Coast to Coast. And I thought, hey, maybe I'll pitch a special. So I it, it ended up feeling like, I'm going to do Space Ghost fanfic. But it was, it was, uh, I was, I was trying, it was my attempt at trying to get Space Ghost back into the action genre, but with the coast to coast humor in it. So basically the premise was that Space Ghost was not, didn't have Zorak and Moltar captive. Zorak and Moltar were actually his wardens, and without him knowing it, Space Ghost had been a prisoner the entire time. And so, <laughs> so they just made this fake talk show to make him think that he was famous and all that stuff, so that the Council of Doom could take over the universe. And so it was all him finding out all of that everything is bullshit, and <laughs> he decides to like go and try and save the universe universe again. Jan and Jace had become members of the, um, what, what was it, the, um, the trio, well, the, the, um, the Galaxy Trio. The, J Jan and Jace had become members of the J Galaxy Trio, so Brack was not in on the whole thing, so Brack was going to end up being the sidekick with Blip the Monkey, and they were going to go fight crime. So that... I can see by the bold over <laughs> excitement in the room that, yeah, I guess that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> I, uh, I pitched a show one time that was going to be to Mike that was called Cash and Carry. And it was a guy who solves crimes with the sentient cash register that he has to carry the cash register around. It's like one of those old metal ones. And like, you know, as the criminal's getting away, they'd like spill out register tape and stuff, or like the drawer would open and knock the guy in the stomach. Surprisingly didn't. <laughs> but the thing was, the cash register was named Carrie. Mm -hmm. It was the guy, his last name was Cash. Ah. That was the flip. Nice. The twist. <laughs> I pitched an idea to both Nickelodeon and Disney Channel about uh, a zombie and his ghost counterpart. It was kind of a, a buddy comedy. 
And I think what killed it in, in both pitches, <laughs> I think they didn't like that I kind of started with, okay, the main character dies in the first episode. <laughs> and so you have two kids' networks going, I don't think we want children being killed. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a meteor. It was it was an accident. It was not gunplay or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was an accident. It was an accident. It was a meteor. Come on. A natural accident too. Not even like somebody dropping something and it sets a bomb off. It's just like a natural mother nature, man. And that, then that's why don't... Adult Swim though is so great because you can take these wonderfully absurd special ideas that seem crazy to a Disney executive, you know, and you that, that's a place And for wait it. for the Adult Swim to also reject it. <laughs> I mean, you know, but that's, that's I always hear, try. like, I've talked to all these people about Adult Swim who have done shows. They're like, some of them seem like they're in development for 12 years. That and then was others, Lazo. That was Lazo. Yeah. But then just, other shows seem like they pitched it and it was on the air in two weeks. I think it was if you had a really blasphemous idea of, I don't know. <laughs> Something horrible about Jesus. Lazo is like, yes! <laughs> but anything after that, you have to wait like five years for him to go, yeah, maybe, no, well, maybe, meh. I mean, you, I guess you never know what's going to charm the powers that be because, oh, like, the, if you, it, okay, like, if you were pitching a show where, okay, there's a shake that talks and a ball of meat, like, you know what I mean? Like, that sounds crazy crazy if it had been rejected and then after the fact, like, I don't know why they didn't want this talking shake, <laughs> but it's just like whatever manages to spark, like to, I, to hit. I can't understand how things get greenlit. Yeah. Like, how do it's you pitch? How did they pitch Napoleon Dynamite? That's what I mean. I mean, it's just like, you watch the movie, it's brilliant, it's amazing, but <laughs> if, if you tell somebody about the idea, everybody's like... <laughs> so he does a dance for his school and feeds moon llamas? <laughs> and he does a dance for the school in moon boots, yeah. see, and that's the funny part. <laughs> oh, yes. Um... Um, I, if you need me to, um, if you need me to, if I'm too quiet, um, I can take off my mask, but I prefer to keep it on because I want to stay kind of anonymous in case anybody sees this. But, um, if you have an answer to this, what oh, is oh, your oh, favorite? Wait, 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 sorry, sorry. It, it's, it's okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm just going to say, like, you don't have to take the mask off, just talk a little slower. Okay, um, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm not, I can barely hear anything ever. Um, and I it, can't see in one okay. eye, so. Um, <laughs> so my question is, if you have an answer to this, what is your favorite show on Adult Swim that is not yours? Oh. Oh, good mm, question. Fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Our favorite show on Adult Swim that's not, we have no involvement with. I mean, I like, um, I like Mr. Pickles. I like the premise that it's just this satanic, basically Satan that they treat like Lassie. I always liked, um, well, I guess I did a, something on it, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I like your pretty messes going to whatever. I, yeah. I like yeah, that I like show, that, that, one. that thing that you were on. I like Super Jail, but I played somebody on it, but only like one time. I've never seen Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty, I think, is great. I'm sure it is. It's I know it is. It's very smart. It's intimidating how good it is. Like, oh. I, I want to watch it. And then going through the pitch process, it shows one, I had an idea that I've had for like, I had for like 15 years before I started pitching it. And I pitched it. I think I pitched it at Nick. And uh, I was stopped in the middle and they said, uh, have you heard of Rick and Morty? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, no, I haven't watched it after that. <laughs> I understand. That makes sense. Uh, banana. 
<laughs> Mr. Dole, yes. Thank How are you? It's hand banana. It's Chiquita, oh, no. asshole. Ironically, you have no hands. They're behind your back, yet you're hand <laughs> banana. Are, yeah. <laughs> um, for Aqua Teen Hunger Force, are you guys like back back now? I saw you guys got ordered for five new episodes. Yeah, I just said. New <laughs> season coming out. I know. Are you guys like after that? Are you like? What do you mean after, after that? More? Just slow down, Mr. Greedy, Mr. <laughs> Payne. Have I you read You get your five it's, first. I, it's too good. Also, you're, I mean, you're right about that. Oh, I thought he was bringing you a uh -oh. ham. He's just going to. Do they have any new episodes with the Plutonians in them? Yes, that's a good one. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And the Moon Knights. I'll let I. Oh, that's a ham worthy question. <laughs> well, I get the ham. Well, I, you're speaking for him. You, you can answer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Andy. Oh, where did he go? Uh, um, wait, what? Oh, you were. Uh, Are there any episodes with the Plutonians in them? I, I haven't been in. Uh, oh, well, we don't I've know. I've been uh, asked since Aquadonks. So. You know what you could do? I don't know. What I learned is. this from all the anime people. They love to say this when they're up on a panel. Ah, uh, we have NDAs. We can't tell you. <laughs> but man, I wish I could so bad. So bad. I wish I could tell you all the cool stuff I'm doing, and it's super cool. It's super cool, but I can't tell you. I can't tell you about it. Oh, they, I just get in so much trouble. But we also have agents, so if we do say something, they call us and say, take that off. Take that off yeah. of social media right now. But also, like, we don't blue ball everybody. I got 16 hot, white hot irons in the fire right now. I'm not even going to talk about it because I'm smart enough. I know. Forget about it. He doesn't need to know about the next six Pixar movies I'm doing. <laughs> Are you doing a Pixar movie? I I'd love to sell you, but I just can't. Is John Lasseter involved? Oh, hold on. Did he touch you oh, at all? Oh, Pete Doctor, oh God, he's texting me again. I just had one more question. Um, oh, what the was, bananas. He yeah. is Mr. Greedy. Look, he this is your, <laughs> so I got 50 people standing behind me. I got another one. This um, is his third question. He yeah, has third a, question. He has <laughs> a, a bunch partners. of questions. Oh, I get it. That's good. <laughs> I'm a professional. The guy asked in bunch. <laughs> what was the animation budget for the early seasons of Aqua Teen? I think I, I know that number when there's no reason I should. But I believe the real answer I could do the joke as it was, yeah, it was about um, $13.12. But I think in reality, it was like $85,000. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and, but then I heard uh, we, Adam, Matt Thompson said that their budget for C-Lab was like $13,000. Yeah. So maybe Aqua Teen was that like, too. Is that possible? Uh, well, Brack Show is... Well, Aqua Teen, you're not pulling, uh, you're, you're not, not, rotos you're not yeah. rotoscoping characters and recycling them out of the original cartoon. So I'm sure you had a bigger uh, animation budget, but you were working with Clay who, you know. But they get no, mad that, at him that doesn't mean you know, Clay sucked, but it was Clay, Clay worked for a lot less than most people. So it was probably, you're probably right. I mean, that, that, I know that was the number at some point. I don't know if that was like when the first one came out or, but still like a normal, a normal animated show in real life, you know, you're watching Nickelodeon or whatever, like it's, it's by the minute. I mean, it's like $40,000 a minute of animation. Like, and I know, I also know that like Monara Team, the show that was on there, that was not made in house, that thing was like $300,000 an episode. Ew. So 300 versus 85 versus 13. I think Space Ghost for a number, for at least the first 10 episodes, I think the whole budget together was maybe $35,000, something for like that. For all of them. Yeah. Which is incredible. And then, you know, it's funny because these big numbers, because you know, like the artists that are making that, they're not the ones getting all of that money. No. It, but it's just enough money that no one gets any money. <laughs> 
How much? I'm making Someone's no money getting. on this. And how much you got? I'm also getting no money on this. I, I, I brought, uh, for the 20th anniversary of uh, Cartoon Network, I, I did some more Cartoon Planet segments. And... Um, I don't, we did that for like nothing, and I had to choose between Zorak or Space Ghost as to who to use as a voice person, because I did Brack for free just because I was writing and producing it, and uh, I had to choose between Zorak and Space Ghost, so... Zorak. I mean, come on, you have to have somebody mean. Uh, so, yeah, George is not in those segments. Well, and that's the other thing, too, with those, like, all the guys at William Street who were making those shows, that budget wasn't paying for them. Like, because you guys were all employees. We were salaries, so yeah. So, like, that, that, that $13,000 was just going to whoever's doing the voices who right. doesn't work at Adult Swim. And, and, and yeah, initially, um, I don't know if Dave got paid for the initial Aqua Teen stuff that he did. Um, but That's why he yeah. did like 50 voices every show because right, it didn't matter. He was getting paid nothing to do them. I'm just saying I feel like we should investigate where, like, what? there's one rich guy somewhere. Meanwhile, Mike Lazo is on a solid gold <laughs> yacht right now. That's what I'm in saying. The, in the middle of France. <laughs> Not even on water. It's just a solid gold vault, wa uh, yacht in the middle of the Tuscan... Toulouse, Toulousian hillside. Yeah. Still not knowing what comedy is. Yes. <laughs> I know weird. <laughs> yes. Okay, so with all the personalities over there at Dot Swim, who's y'all's least favorite, and what did they do to make you not like them? <laughs> well, I love uh, all the, the venom I coming from the I, 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 I will gladly say. <laughs> So much venom from uh, the, the audience. They, they want, want the I, dish, I, man. I don't yeah. blame them. They La want uh, to one, know. Uh, Lazo, and um, the reason was uh, he existed. <laughs> 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 and then Keith, because he was an ass kisser. <laughs> it would have been hilarious if you said Dana. <laughs> Dana, because... There's one guy, but I don't like talking bad about people in front of them, so I'm not going well, to... Well, see, I didn't like Dana because he wouldn't tell anybody about any of the projects he was working on. <laughs> you know I'd love to, though. Oh, I wish I could tell you. Oh, my... And the stars in it. Oh, my gosh, I wish I could tell The cast! The cast alone would give you an aneurysm if you heard it. It's so exciting and incredible. Not even a hint. Oh, I'd love to, but let's say he's held a lightsaber before on screen. I can't say. I can't say. Were you in the room, uh, the, the the building? Were you at the Skywalker Ranch? Uh huh. Have you been in the building where they have this, the amazing spiral staircase that's made out of one tree? Oh, yeah, the library. Wow. The best thing at Skywalker you guys Ranch, wish. though. Uh, the best thing there is they for me they have they have this case when you go into like the house that's called the house and that's where the library is mm -hmm. and there's these two like display cases of just cool shit you know it's like ah here's a Indiana Jones whip and this thing and that little golden idol and it's all the real stuff you know but the coolest thing it's like a eight and a half by eleven frame. And then there's a black and white picture next to it. And it's a picture of the Keystone cops with all of their police badges. Wow. And you can spot them and you're like, oh, there's that guy. There's the guy with the weird Hitler mustache. That one's his. <laughs> like, it's super cool. And they're all different. Like, they're not, you, you know, like one looks like a police shield. The next one looks like a sheriff star. Like, they're all different shape and stuff. That's crazy. That was the neatest thing. Have you been, did you go to the screening room? Yeah. They have the giant Jedi statues in the... I don't remember. Or was All that I just remember is Star Wars? in the mixing, they have TikTok from Return to Oz. You remember that weird, like, robot, like, I'd love to help you, Dorothy, but I can barely walk. <laughs> like, that, like, weird, like, bow-legged, and he had, like, the little top hat. That's, like, in the... That was neat. <laughs> that yeah. was a thing. Yeah. I saw. <laughs> that was super neat. And they, you couldn't take pictures there, but I took pictures anyway. But, it, but the creepy thing is out there, like if you're staying there, like I pulled up to the pool-in gate, and they're like, hello, Dana, how are you? 
Like they just know shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they just know. Because they got cameras all over the place. Uh, there's all these people saying, I picked up the phone in like the common room to get some ice. She just goes, hey, Dana, what's up? Whoa. Like, they just know. That's scary. Because you know everybody there just wants to steal Darth Vader's crap. Yeah. Like, so they're like, we got to, there's a little farmer's stall, like, uh, that they have, like, fresh vegetables that anybody could just take, you know, like, they grow them on the property somewhere or whatever. We covered, on a show on Cartoon Network, we covered the third, Star Wars number three. Uh, the Return of the Jedi? No, no, no. The clone, the Jar Jar Binks. Clone bullshit. What's and, a, yeah, right. Uh, so we were going to interview everybody by like some swimming pool or something like that, but it was raining. So they put us in this uh, stable. <laughs> And we interviewed uh, George Lucas, Ian McDiarmid, and um, uh, Darth Vader, what's his name, not... Uh, and David Prowse? No, 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 the young one, Hayden oh, Christensen. Oh, Hayden Christensen. On bales Dynamic of, performer. On, on, bale, on bales of hay <laughs> with sheep walking around. And at some point, they had like a bucket of water in the corner. And every once in a while, you would see somebody like catch a bunch of mice in a net and just dunk them in the water. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh. Yeah. I want a Skywalker Ranch mouse. <laughs> oh, wow. No. Please adopt a mouse. <laughs> That'll be the most fulfilling, adopt a mouse, the most fulfilling two weeks of your life taking care of this mouse. <laughs> I'm assuming they have like a two year, two week lifespan or something. Yeah. <laughs> or they get away and just live in your yeah. walls after that. Not today, sucker. <laughs> yeah. Reap Act a tree. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is my C.S. Lewis reference of the day. This is probably a l really lame question that you get a lot, but well, you sound so excited about it, so <laughs> please go ahead. Well, you know, I'm just so passionate about it. Um, back in the day when you had uh, the Hanna Barbera properties that they just shoved at you. No, well, the, first of all, that was the first stuff that we owned, Out, outside of the Popeyes, Tom and Jerry's, and and Bugs Bunnies that we got from the TBS library. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. That's that's why I'm saying. When, that's when they, that's kind of. But uh, I'm sorry. That's kind of where Boomerang came from. Is we had that surplus of of uh, crappy shows from the 70s that. That I loved. I, I programmed Boomerang for like three years just by myself, and it was oh, like really? playing with everything that I grew up watching as a kid. So that it was like working in a toy store at that point. I used to, used to love outside. Boomerang so much. Um, so was there ever any idea you had for a, a Hanna Barbera IP that you pitched and some suit said no, you can't use them like that? It wasn't that. It was, um, uh, and this isn't Cartoon Network, Warner Brothers, or anything like that. I was, I, I knew uh, the guy I was pitching to at, at, at uh, Disney Channel uh, a lot, and um, uh, he wanted me. I, I said, "What would you like?" And he was like, "Pitch uh, something that is either uh, the the theme park property show or a, a legacy." And so. I came in with a, like a haunted mansion idea, and <laughs> after working like uh, almost a year on it, they were like, "Well, Benicio del Toro—not Benicio, but uh, Gu Guillermo del Toro has interest in this." And I'm like, "I'm not going to get that one." Uh, but then, but then I said, "Okay, Roger Rabbit." <laughs> as soon as I said Roger Rabbit, they're like. It's like pitching a Batmite comic to DC <laughs> during the uh, uber serious Batman days. Uh, yeah, they weren't having it. Um, I, I was working on a snooper and blabber idea. But now, like, C.H. Uh, Greenblatt is doing uh, Jellystone. The guy who did, made Chowder. He did Chowder. He's Snagglepuss. Uh, it's, it's a show about... Um, the town of Jellystone, where basically every Hanna-Barbera character lives in it. Like, Yogi Bear's the town doctor, Huckleberry Hound's the mayor, <laughs> Captain Caveman's the chief of police, Snagglepuss, like, the town reporter, uh, 
<laughs> but they would, they would pay criminal. us tribute every once in a while, and at like the theater, they would have a Brokeback Mountain type poster with with uh, Zorak and Brack embracing. <laughs> And then, so, uh, about a year ago, they called and said that they wanted to do an episode about a uh, sci-fi, I can't talk about that? I don't think so. I'd love him to talk I'd about that. I'd love oh to talk about oh, one man. of my characters being on that show with a bunch of other characters that I was associated with, but I can't because I blew it after I, after, after I recorded it. I was like, hey, I did this for Jellystone, right. and my agent was like, Take that down. Take hey, it could, down now. You could probably tell them here, especially here. No okay, filming. they did a sci-fi They're convention. Not I thought they were They did a sci-fi convention in Jellystone. <laughs> and uh, the guest of honor is... Peter Potamus dresses as Space Ghost. The guest of honor of the show is Space Ghost. So they got George... Uh, and so and Andy. Brack and Zorak and Moltar show up to Raz Space Ghost during his panel. And um, I don't know who they got to do Zorak and Moltar. I hope they sound good. But they basically, they gave me like a Robin Williams, Mork, and Mindy script type of thing. They were like, the basic line is there. And they oh. say, you so know, Brack. Script? They, you know, Brack. Do <laughs> whatever he would say here. So I, there was a, there's a lot of me. Uh, horsing around. Carl, um, who made Chowder and made Jellystone, is like a super Adult Swim fan. Mm. When I moved out, I got on Chowder because he loved Aqua Teen, and he did, the first time I did it, he did the same thing. Just do, say whatever you want. And Welcome to the Wayne was like that, too. Yeah, and we had a whole talk about you and George when we were recording about to do the Space Ghost thing. Because I was like, are you going to get them? He goes, please, yeah, please, of course. Please tell him. Please tell him. I would like to be other characters. Okay, I will. Do that. I would like to have work. <laughs> I did a crazy character on there. That's. I don't think he's coming out till the next episode, the I, next season or whatever. But yeah. Carl was like, I think everyone's going to hate him. But we love him because he, he cracks us up so much. There was a terrible Hanna-Barbera cartoon called Moby Dick about a white whale and then two little kids in scuba gear all the time with just like bubbles over their head and they just solved strange underwater crimes with the help of this white whale who would like smack the sea creatures around so that the kids didn't get hurt. But the one's kid, he was the fat kid, so his name was Tub. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in the jelly stone now, but they call him Tube, like you say Brock. Exactly. Uh, his name is Tube. And every, oh, every time he talks, at the end of his sentence, he always sends up screaming! <laughs> like... <laughs> And he's always getting hurt, like he's cutting his hands off and not realizing it, and like horrible things constantly happen to him. He still has his scuba thing on, he never takes it off. But like we laugh hysterically at it, and he's just like, I think no one's gonna like, so, they're not gonna know why he's in it, it's too weird. He's Augustus Gloop. Ba yeah, he is Augustus <laughs> Gloop, yeah, that's exactly it. Stuck in that pipe. Stuck in the chocolate yeah. fountain. I think there was one where like, somehow bees get inside his scuba suit, so you just see him <laughs> flying around his face as he's blood-curdling screams. Oh my gosh. Well, that was always fun about the Brack show, is they brought in Clarence, who I got to voice, and he was just the, the fat kid to, to kick around and torture. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I'm not well. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, my question is, um, what is, this is for you, Dana. Uh, what is your favorite episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Um, like, what's your all-time favorite episode that you worked on? I mean, I don't remember a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if I watched them all, I mean, there were... I, I think the ones I like, some of them I like because they remind me of what we were doing when we did it, like when we recorded it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I mean, 
I get a la- I get a laugh out of a lot of them. Yeah. Like I like I like hand banana. I like whatever the Highlander one is. There's one that I like a lot. Hello, Milo. There's one I like a lot that's like I can't remember what it's called, but they're like all in a bunker because some nuclear weapon has gone off, oh, so they yeah. can't go up on the surface. That was funny. But it's all four of them being complete morons. Like fighting over the food and who's going to use the toilet. Like there's just a bucket for the toilet, but like Shake has already eaten all the food and they've been in there for like four minutes. I think that the episode is called some, because the diet, like just them them interacting with each other is, I find it very funny. Yeah. But I think the episode title is something like whatever the creature of the week is, because he's the one who locked them in there or something. And like, it's not Moth Monster Man, but it's something else. Got it. I like the Wong Burger party party all the time where Frylock has inoperable cancer <laughs> and it started with Andrew WK. Is that what that guy's name is? Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's probably, it probably sounds interesting to people that you could forget an episode, but it's been over several years and yeah. you've done so much voiceover work, but also like one episode, like how long would it take to record one episode? Ooh. When we first started, four hours. Ooh. Now, we could, I mean, we did these last ones, which I, well, I would love to, t- mm, boy, I wish I could tell you about <laughs> I mean, we get, we'd get one done in 35 minutes. That's good. But it's because we we're all, we all work together now. We know, they know how I speak, and I know what they like, and they, they write a lot more to my voice rather than, you know, at the beginning, they wrote to, like, the voice they heard. Yeah. But then we would do lots of improv, and we still do lots of improv, but like, you know, yeah. it's just a lot. We all, everybody has a shorthand with each other. Yeah. It, it takes Oglethorpe about 35 minutes, as, as, as long as my voice can hold out, because I scream a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, just one more question. Oh. Uh, I want to know, this for you, Dana, again, I'm sorry. Um, could you... To the left. <laughs> No, wrong question. Okay, sorry. I took a stab Could in the dark. please do an um, impression of the grandma angry? I just think she is so hilarious. Would I do her? Would I do her voice? Yeah, just but it's angry. not an impression. Oh, it's the sorry. real thing. Well, yeah. I That's like impression. asking George Clooney if he can do an impersonation of George Clooney. I'm sorry. <laughs> you do it, and then I'll do the impression. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, girl, you like to party? <laughs> Ooh, thanks for the gizgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the gizgasm. See, anybody can do it. <laughs> hey, girl, you like the party? You just need a lifetime of sinus problems. and. Uh... Hey, girl, you like the party? Exactly. Jeez, man, it is easy to be Get on the granny I mean, band Everybody, wagon. close your eyes. There's no job security <laughs> yeah. for Dan Who's Snyder. Who's doing it? <laughs> now, I will say for everyone left, we because I'm looking at the time, oh, we do have to just keep it to one question if oh. we're going to get to everyone. Her her now, although I know the person on the end of the line has asked a couple already. Here so we, we go. We at least want to get to He got the, the ball rolling. He's going to get got the ball, ball stopped. Rolling. He's going to start the ball. Slam it home. One question. Got it. Isaac, uh, who I've never seen before. You have Schwartz. to ask the question. Isaac. No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Are, the Schwartz. What is your guys' thoughts on Mike Tyson mysteries? If you uh, watch the show. I can tell you what Hugh told me about it. Every time Mike Tyson came in, they were terrified of him. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, okay, are we doing this? And then he was like, dude, like, all right, I'm done. And he would just get up and leave. Like, they were like, he didn't finish the lines. They were like, well, you better have some new fucking lines, pal, because you're not getting anywhere out of him. I was in the green room with him at Comic-Con, and, like, all the adult swim people were in there. So it was just like a box of weirdos. And then, like, Mike Tyson was there with, like, his guys. Mike Tyson. And I mean, there was a danger you could taste in the air. It, it was like Mike man, Tyson I sure had hope a writer. This panel. Mike he, Tyson had a writer. Just boxes of Holyfield ears. Uh, <laughs> he's just snacking on ears all day. <laughs> hey, these are good. Indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you see that show he did? That live show. It was really incredible. It did a show on Broadway. It was a one-man Mike Tyson show. It was really good. And but he, he had, sang and everything? He did not sing. Oh. But he had, like, this great, like, he would do this thing sometimes that he'd be like, you know, 
you know, he'd go like, I'm, I know I don't do Mike Tyson right. Please don't tell him. Uh, but he'd be like, you know, uh, well, when you're incarcerated, well, you, sir, you look like you're no stranger to incarceration. Am I right? <laughs> Who's going to say no? He's, I might tell him he's wrong. They don't be like, yes, I'm better than He's like, okay, well, you know. <laughs> but he'd do that with it. Well, you know what it's like to eat four pizzas in a row? You look like you're no stranger to eating four pizzas. <laughs> but it was like a great little gag that made him almost seem not like a, a rapist white beater. <laughs> please, please, please go out and keep saying, yes. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it was a good show, regardless of his criminal act. Abuse. It, yes. It, it, it emulated Hanna Barbera in the 70s, where everybody was like, "Let's do Scooby Doo with Captain yeah. Caveman or the I, Schmoo." The idea of it is great. Like, that's a great idea for that, because who's the last person you? And they, and I mean, they did Muhammad Ali and the Tooth Decay Gang. <laughs> that it was a whole album uh, about him fighting tooth decay, mm -hmm. so before, why not? Before we put Scooby-Doo on, on uh, Boomerang and just ran the crap out of it, uh, we would have that extra hour every fall. And I would always put Mr. T oh. and, uh, uh, you know, that karate guy. Uh, oh, uh, Jackie, not Jackie no, Chan, uh, it was... Uh, Bruce Lee? No, no, no. Uh, Walker, Texas Ranger. Uh, oh, Chuck Norris. Chuck, yeah, it was. It was a. It was Mr. T cartoon followed by the Chuck Norris cartoon for just the that one extra hour a year. <laughs> God. So that the and and I hit it in in that extra hour and. Like three weeks after airing it, Chuck Norris's wife called, saying that you know we owed her money for oh, for, for airing the show. Yeah, well, we, he uses we a lot of hair product. That that was the beauty of all the Hanna Barbera stuff is just all the crap you could wade through and Gilligan's put on the planet. Uh, that's filmation, but yes, oh, stuff like that. Sorry, yes, Captain Underpants. Huh, what? <laughs> okay, so when I first came across... Oh boy, this already sounds like a problem. Notice that I is started Captain like, Underpants. Okay, so um, <laughs> like, I, there is a scratch on the car, like when the, dad, when the kid comes back. Like, okay, so don't be mad, but remember that glass jar you love that you precariously put on top of the piano? And don't be mad. <laughs> Mom yes, always said, don't play ball I totally broke house. it. I'm so sorry. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. When I had first came across Adult Swim, it was like a late night cartoon network. Do you feel like the content has changed since then? Hmm. Are you talking like the, the early release? When, like in 2001, it started and it kind of, one of the anchor shows was Coast to Coast, which started on Cartoon Network, and then everything kind of almost was kind of in that same vein. Uh, but after that, acquiring stuff from the Hollywood people and stuff, uh, I think I was talking about this earlier. I think once uh, South Park set the bar of how far you could go on television, I think that's, uh, that's you know, that, I, that's what shaped some of it. Uh, if <laughs> and then I've seen so much worse after that, you know. That's the thing. Like, we were talking about this today to somebody. Like, when all those first round of shows started on Adult Swim Prop, you know, Sea Lab and Brack Show and uh, Aqua Teen and Harvey Berman, you couldn't swear. Maybe by like season five, we could say shit once. But I'm watching some on there and they're just like throwing F-bombs around like they say anything now. Well, streaming is like anything's, yeah. anything. Like I love uh, Harley Quinn. Have you seen it? No. They, <laughs> every episode I'm like, they can go that far? Wow. <laughs> well, I remember there was a weird world too which when you did stuff online, for like adultswim.com or the streaming stuff on there, as opposed to on the TV, you were you actually could do more on the TV because the lawyer's point was 
anybody can get on the internet. A seven-year-old can get on the internet and type in something and that could pop up. As opposed to on the network, they have that thing that comes up that says this is intended for mature audiences over 14 or whatever. So you could do slightly more risque things on, the, on Adult Swim channel as opposed to the streaming thing. But that was like, you know, a long time ago. Not now it's not like, yesterday. Now it's like the opposite. Mm -hmm. You can do anything now. Anything. And I mean which we got some crazy stuff coming up. Oh, I wish I could tell you about it. Boy, I wish I could I just can't. Oh, yes, I need to do So what did you, you do for Pixar? What's that? What did you do for Pixar? <laughs> Pixar. I'd love to tell you. I'll show you pictures. That's the other thing they all do when they're in these panels like this. I'll show you. You know, it's the um, it's it's this thing, and the guy goes, "Oh yeah, that's amazing, God! I wish I could tell him about." <laughs> I wish you could see it. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> Rated R Pixar. <laughs> Pixar. <laughs> It's like Pix, P I X X X. Yeah. Tri oh. P I triple X. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, let's get back to business. Celebrity mm -hmm. graves? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw. I Everybody st shut up. We got an important question. <laughs> I, now, stumbled, okay? I stumbled upon Stan Laurel's grave in Forest Lawn. <gasps> Where? Oh, at Forest Lawn? It's like in the middle of nowhere. Oh. What's it say? Stan Laurel. That's it? Uh huh. No. Nothing else? None of that. Walt Some Disney's another fine there mess as well. stuff. None of that. Damn it. Okay. Are really? you here for the pageant? The, oh, right. The there's masquerade. A pageant in here afterwards. Who's here for the masquerade? Oh, yeah. There's a big th event in here afterwards. Well, no. you get a ham. I don't know. No. We're at zero. <laughs> we're at zero. <laughs> All right. No, uh, realistically, where's the line for you guys when you were writing and creating these characters that you're portraying? Like, where's the line between, all right, this is all a character, and how much of it is actually, like, you coming out in the performance? I mean, I know that Dave and Matt have said I've added a lot of... Anytime Shake has been show businessy, it's because of me. <laughs> like, acting like a 50s nightclub comic was not, is not in their normal... Anytime, like, it's vaudevillian. Yeah, any vaudevillian-type <laughs> spice is probably... You, you, you could count on anytime George Lowe would complain about anything, even like his agent, his pay, anything. If he would bitch about anything, it's going in the show. <laughs> <laughs> and he would be like, guys, come on. And we're like, well, you keep saying it into an open mic. Come on. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think we were, we're it's, it, uh, any of these shows that we work on on Adult Swim, uh, we usually have the luxury to, to ad lib as much as we want, usually. On whether like, or not they use it, it's, you know, up to them, but... I know, like, when there's an episode about the uh, Aqua Teens getting new gutters, that's because Matt was getting new gutters on his house. <laughs> like, I mean, there's stuff, weird stuff like that, you know, like... All right, the ball stopper. Here we go. He stops as good as he starts. <laughs> he came in like a rare All right, last question. So, with uh, well, actually, I got to stop you right there. We are like just over time. Let him, let him ask. I, let I, him I, ask. Like, All right, got, then, say it fast. You got to say it faster than. All right. How about I believe now? All right, so since with all the annoying things that censors tell y'all that y'all not allowed to do, do y'all have a favorite moment where I was like, I cannot believe y'all let me get away with this? My I mean, they didn't do that, but I'll say, I'll say real quick for one. Hello, Devin. Hello, Kepler. Uh, uh, they did an episode explaining what HR was and how they couldn't sh blow a nun's head off with a shotgun <laughs> and have blood come out, but they could have rainbow come out. And they did that in the whole in the episode to explain why they couldn't do what they wanted to do. <laughs> So it was sort of like it was censored, but by exposing the censors. As, as a writer producer, my favorite thing once a year was the letter that came in from corporate with the list of things we couldn't say. Because <laughs> you get, you know, an official typed up list, but then you're looking at it going. <laughs> Anything you want to plug. <laughs> oh, and I wish I could tell you about this. Oh, oh good. Man. Well, let me just say it. Do you like Star Wars? Oh, I wish I could tell you about it all. Jeez. Uh, I just did an episode of Kiff for Disney 
Oh. Um, so this is my first, well, I did Gravity Falls, but this was my first actual real speaking role for, for Disney. So I was very honored that they asked me to do it and proud. Gravity Falls. Because you can't, well, yeah, well, it is. Yeah, I. <laughs> I think I'm in the same credits page as Louis C.K., which <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, well. <laughs> My picture at Disney Channel is right under Henry Winkler's. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Andy Merrill and Dana Snyder. Thank you so much and for Lisa coming Cabrario. out. And Lisa Cabrario. And, and yes. uh, come and get a ham, because I don't want to take him home. <laughs>